Hello and welcome to the new episode of the sysadmin tips for beginners. Siavash here and in today's tutorial you are going to learn how to install the PowerShell core on Windows Server. So let's begin. First of all let's take a look at what is the built-in Windows PowerShell. So start PowerShell and here we go we have a PowerShell environment uh, which is as a tradition Tools is a very powerful tool for automating tasks and simplifying configuration. Um, can be used to automate almost any task in the Windows ecosystem, uh, including all um, Windows servers such as Active Directory, even expanded in Azure nowadays. Uh, so it's no wonder that's uh, become very popular among the sysadmins and experienced Windows user. For example, if we type just PS version and you can use a tab so the autocomplete showing us that the current version is a 5.1 as a current of recording this video and is uh, again as a windows powershell coming however due to recent changes in microsoft philosophy and increased powershell usage microsoft decided to build a cross-platform powershell and make it available for it environments that are using Linux and Mac OS in addition to their Windows machines. Um, so PowerShell has gone from Windows only management tools to an um, application that can be installed on multiple OS types and extend the management features across all supported environments. Well, that's uh, the main uh, reason that uh, we have a PowerShell core. If we want to compare that uh, these two PowerShell, let's open the Notepad++. And here we, if we have a Windows, I can type Windows PowerShell, or is the name is a PS. Uh, we traditionally we have a, it's come it works with the .NET framework, and it's a single platform, which is a Windows only. Um, just come with the Windows, and we saw that since the Windows XP, if I'm mistaken, Windows 2008, and they improved during all these years with all the recent version of the Windows. And we want to compare this with the PowerShell Core, which is a new app from the Microsoft PowerShell Core PSC. Uh, it's uh, based on uh, .NET Core runtime. So we can, if you have a .NET Core runtime, you can run it on any environment. It's a cross-platform, so it can be run on a Mac OS, can be on a Linux, and even, uh, of course, in a Windows also. A, you may ask why, we, if we have a Windows PowerShell, why we need to go with the PowerShell Core, but just have the same in integrated environment for all your application is a good practice. Uh, and support the ARM uh, processors, there's no limitation almost, they're expanding all the systems. But must understand, uh, so we need to download this and install separately. So it's technically, it's another application, so it can sit side by side of your, your Windows PowerShell and can be run separately. It's important to understand since it's a cross-platform, um, some missing modules, we have some missing modules here, like um, this makes sense. Uh, we don't have a Hyper-V module in Linux or Mac OS. So um, things like a Hyper-V module, DNS clients, that some of some of the components may be missing. And as you know that traditionally Windows is not case sensitive, um, Linux is, and so the PowerShell core support the case, can be case sensitive in a smart way if it's not the command no need to be case sensitive can ignore that uh, things like um, delimiters like uh, backslash or forward slash in the traditional difference between windows and linux environments all of them are under support and so it's more compat compatible with the linux sysadmins these are the main difference between the powershell flavors we can run our windows environment now let's uh, find out how to download and install the PowerShell core. Before that, I just go to the server manager. And since this is a, this is a very uh, brand new Windows 2016, nothing on it is even, it's not a joint to domain or anything, it's just to the server. 
and um, it's running on my home lab. Uh, let me go to the server manager and disable some uh, security for uh, IE, IE enhanced security configuration. Click on and temporarily disable it for uh, administrator until you install your favorite browser. Uh, so we don't receive those sort of errors on IE. And let's um, just search for the PowerShell core. And here we go. So these are all the information. It's a cross-platform Windows, Linux, and Mac OS automation and configuration tools and framework that works well with your existing tool. And it's optimized for dealing with structured data like a JSON, CSV, XML, and etc. Installing PowerShell on Windows. So it's Trajan and Microsoft is keep them in our server, but now they're using the GitHub. So they have all the source on GitHub, but I go to the page installing PowerShell on Windows. There are some prerequisites, and you can see that here on the left panel, we have all the installation guide for Linux, Mac OS, Docker, and ARM. So download the installation. I'll click on this link on the latest version. This is at the moment running, looks like a PowerShell 7 is available. So we go to the latest and go to the GitHub page of the Microsoft. And let's look at uh, what we have here. So we're looking for some stable version. Yeah, all of CM uh, come on, let us start update and fixing here. And here we go. So PowerShell, CentOS, Red Hat, all the Linux, uh, the Windows, ARM, and we are looking for a Win 64 bit, zip, and MSI. So we just can download the MSI file and run it. And but I hear and show you how to we can use the tradition uh, PowerShell to download music. So we just right click on this one and we just want to uh, just copy the, the target. So it's a copy the shortcut and let's back to our Notepad++ and paste the path. So as you can see, it's coming from the disk URL and download version 7, PowerShell 7.1.3 in Windows X64 architect and .msi. So now it's time to go to the PowerShell and we can start to using the power of the PowerShell to the install. So what command we are going to use is invoke. And again, you can use a tab. If you type properly, proper one, invoke web request. This is similar to the wget in the Linux environment. And um, let's, let's take a look. If I click this, it just can go by step by step. So expecting to give you the URI, but we just want to go with the full syntax and a uri now we have that things we just have right click we, we copy from the web github just right click it's coming here and now we want to saying that to just go with a specific out file it can be as anything you like is it. make maybe it's, easy, it's easier you just put the some some easy name for that like you can say psc.msi and the powershell core and just press enter so it won't work because as you can see that we received that uh, some ssl and tls uh, for security reason by default is that thing uh, my windows support tls version one so let's let's increase that as, uh, and github using the higher version of the tls it should be 1.2 uh, 1.3 if it's 1.3 but let's set the environment to download through the the powershell so the easiest way is using the powershell itself and we can use the net service and net service point manager Let's check service point manager colon colon and we go with the security protocol protocol and it should be equal to TLS 12 TLS 11 and TLS 
So it's a good guide about this over the internet. As you can see, that should be okay. It's set. So just use up arrow, invoke web request from the URI, it's a uniform resource indicators, and put, put down output file of the PSI to MSI, press enter. As you can see, it's start to downloading. So it takes time to download the PowerShell core on this Windows environment. Let's see. While it's downloading, I just go back to my uh, PowerShell and just pin to the taskbar to keep it here handy. It's been useful. All right, the download is complete. Uh, in PowerShell, remember, if you receive this red text, means some errors. If you don't receive anything, most of the time, that's uh, that's okay I and mean, execute properly. So now we have our downloaded file and we can install it. So we can go to the PS. See if I click here, we just can go to our PSC dot MS. Uh, this is the exact name as we, we choose, so we just press enter and the installer is launched. So, welcome to PowerShell 7, external setup wizard. And this is the location of the PowerShell, is in under program files. Whereas the Windows uh, PowerShell is on a Windows uh, in System 32, we can later check that. And the next, so just defaults, we don't receive it even logging as at the PowerShell's path environment variable. These are good things. And install. After a couple of seconds, it should be installed on your Windows as a separate application. So the installation for other platform is very similar. Microsoft came with this idea to having uh, that separate Windows PowerShell. But don't forget, there are still minor differences. Um, this is a cross-platform open source version. And we're expecting the Microsoft focus on this more uh, this ongoing development, new features, and they're moving forward on this version, whereas the Traditional PowerShell, I think this just received some stability update as needed, um, just fixing the critical and security bugs, if any. But um, it's good, as I said, when you learn how to work with the PowerShell core. Perfect, the wizard is complete, and we can launch the PowerShell and finish. And as you can see, it, this one is running from the PowerShell, 7 PowerShell, and okay, let me put these two windows side by side. Let me increase the font size for this windows also, just properties. And now let's go to 15, like this, good. Yep, nice. All right, we can see these two windows side by side. And there were some uh, differences, let me Put pin this PowerShell core here also. And that's it. That's how you can install the PowerShell core on your Windows. And um, I hope I can create some videos to become familiar with the basic concept of the PowerShell. Uh, it's a very powerful application. Um, you can use it for so many automation in your environment. Uh, thanks for watching. Please watch, learn, subscribe, and share. Leave your comments. I'll be happy if I can answer your question. And see you in other videos soon.